Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're playing catch up today. We uh, kind of slacked off a little bit over the New Year's, but we're going to play catch up on the Wonder Woman 1984 situation. Mm -hmm. And you call it a situation. Okay. I, I'm calling it a situation. You shouldn't call it a situation. A shit. Yeah, I don't know if we can say <laughs> that 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 early into the video. We can swear, but it's got to be after the first commercial break. So, well, I said That's, situation. Maybe I have an accent. Uh, there you accent. go. They'll tr they'll tr <laughs> they'll translate it into something else anyway. A big fluent a hole. No, sorry. Uh, so we're gonna talk about the the ratings for Wonder Woman eighty four dropping off a freaking cliff and you know, what this means going forward for Star Wars, because Patty Jenkins is supposed to do the Rogue Squadron movie, mm -hmm. which people were incredibly excited about until Wonder Woman 1984. Now, everybody makes a bad movie yeah, every happens. once in a while. But this one isn't just her directing a bad movie. She wrote the bad movie. She wrote <laughs> so. this movie, yeah. So let's talk about that, because, you know, the original Wonder Woman was a, a great movie that Patty Jenkins did not write. Mm -hmm. uh, Patty Jenkins had a heavy hand in Wonder Woman 84, and as I understand it, she's gonna have a heavy hand in Rogue Squadron. Um, yeah. that, that could be a problem for Star Wars. I was excited about her directing, and now I'm not. This makes me upset as a woman, because I was like, yay, you know, we're gonna have Patty Jenkins is gonna do Rogue Squadron, it's gonna be awesome. Um, and then, you know, I saw Wonder Woman, and I was like, dang it. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk about that and how Wonder Woman 84 is falling out of favor. According to Bounding in the Comics, it's the lowest rated DCEU movie ever. But I think it's the highest. The first one was the highest rated, I think. Or one of the highest rated. One of DC. the highest, yeah. Yeah. So the first Wonder Woman was one of the highest, and this latest one is one of the lowest. Is the lowest. Wonder Woman 84. Now, I, I can hope that maybe this will be a one-off, that this will be the Iron Man 2 or uh, Thor Dark World of the DCEU that maybe the third one will be better. They've already greenlit it, but who knows? It was really hard to follow that first one, though. It was always going to be hard to follow the first yeah. one. But they could have yeah. done it way better than they did. Yeah, they, they could have. Uh, Magic Wishing Rock does not make a good villain. No, <laughs> that's um, what it was. Yeah, it was Wonder Woman versus the Magic Two, two misunderstood rock. villains, because don't you know, villains can't just, they, they can't just be evil now. No, no, they have to be relatable, and you have to understand why they're villains, because not no one's really bad. It's just that they had bad cir circumstances and situations, but the real villain is the the evil god and the magic magic wishing rock. So it was the Steven Universe. Uh, it was, you know, situations uh, how Steven Universe solves all of its problems by hugging it out with the bad guys because they don't actually want to kill you; they just want a puppy or they want to be. They friends. just wanted to be. They just wanted to to, to to have power because they were abused as children. Or, Emotional validation. They just wanted to be have be powerful because they felt weak and, and preyed upon. Which you know, I'm not saying that's. I understand it. That's what I'm saying. These characters are very understandable and relatable, which I appreciate. But it did get to the place where it was like, there wasn't a real bad guy. The real bad guy was a rock. And human greed. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it was like, okay. It's like Doctor Who. Man is the bad guy. Man's the bad guy. All right. So uh, we're going to talk about that. Before we get into it, please subscribe for more pop culture news. Views and rants, guys. We're over 166,000 subs. Woohoo! Hoping for 200,000 soon. Uh, Yay! Yeah. So it's been a great year for us. 2020 was actually, at least in terms of the channel. For the channel, yes. Was a good year for us. Unfortunately, the rest of 2020 was uh, shit. So For most people. For so. most people. But thank you for the support during these unprecedented times. Right. Uh, so yeah, according to Bounding in the Comics, Wonder Woman 84 is the lowest rated DCEU movie. I got to go out and check... This have actually got some different ratings. Maybe if you take it all together, because um, I was always under the impression that Batman versus Superman was the lowest rating, at least on I Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, it's got a terrible uh, tomato meter score. Was, I didn't like that movie. I thought it was very dark and very boring, but that's just my my personal opinion. Actually, my what, mom is named Martha too. My mom is not named Martha, but you know, <laughs> everybody's mom is Martha. But you know, Wonder Woman actually is what won me back to the the DCEU. Mm -hmm. I didn't like Man of I didn't hate Man of Steel, but I didn't like the fact that it was dark and it was Superman and Superman killed. Mm -hmm. I had a huge problem with that. That's not Superman's character. But uh, Wonder Woman rapes, so what the hell? Maybe yeah, that's just, the way, <laughs> like, you know. that's just the way things roll here. But the first Wonder Woman won me back, and then Aquaman, and then Shazam, and I'm like, you know what? I've actually got more hope for the DCEU than I do the Marvel uh, MCU at this point. But now 
I take it back with Wonder Woman 84. I'm like, That's 2020. No. There's no hope for anything. Well, it yeah. was 2020. Thank God we're out of that. Let's hope it's better and not worse. So according to Bounding in the Comics, Wonder Woman 84 scores on IMDb and Rotten Tomatoes have fallen to the point that the, the DC film is now the worst rated of the extended universe. That's taking everything into consideration, not just Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, IMDb and Amazon site gives it a star rating of 5.6 out of 10 with 90,000 user votes. That's lower than Birds of Prey what? and Suicide Squad. <laughs> That's pretty bad. Uh, formerly the lowest scoring DCEU film. So let's go out to uh, IMDb here. And just some, oh my God, some of these reviews. Two out of 10. Must have seen a different movie. Makes Justice League and Suicide Squad look Oscar worthy. Horrendous. Utter disappointment. Sorry, Patty, you tanked. Shambles. Should have stayed in 1984. From Hero to Zero in just two Wonder Woman movies. It was just all over the place. Miserable. Patty, stick to directing. You can't write. I'm gonna, okay, I'm going to agree with this because the first movie was very succinct and had a good story and it was just done well. The next movie was all over the damn place. It was like this meandering path that, that wove all around and never got to the point. So what's the difference? And we, we looked into this before. Well, we will mention it to me. That's why I, I mentioned oh, okay. it to you. I didn't know. I thought that Patty Jenkins actually had a hand in no, I, yeah, she did. the original Wonder Woman. She, did, she was the director. She was not the writer. The writers I have were uh, Zach, Alan Heinberg, Zack Snyder, and Jason, is it Fuchs? I'm sure that's how he pronounces it compared to the other pronounce, yeah. pronunciation. So yeah. you had the story by them. On the first one, Zack Snyder, imagine that, being able to tell a good story. And then this last one uh, you put up, we have Patty Jenkins, Jeff Johns, and Dave Callahan. Yeah, so Patty Jenkins was clearly in charge of the story of Wonder Woman 84, whereas Zack Snyder was in charge of the original Wonder Woman. Uh, one of them was a better movie <laughs> than the other. Yes. You know, uh, and I'm not saying that that Patty Jenkins can't write. I mean, she she worked on Monster. She wrote and directed Monster, and I think it won a bunch of awards. But 2003. Yeah, in 2003. Uh, I, look, I want female directors to succeed. You know, because I think that you know, I don't like the idea that, that some women are stereotyped. But it doesn't help when we get stuff like this. Yeah, and I think I think uh, Captain Marvel two is going to be uh, oh Captain Marvel two is that they're just not even going to pretend it's something other than an agenda film. So yeah, um, we've got these really. I just read the other reviews are all true. Oh, when will this end? Terrible, vastly disappointing, long and boring. I don't know if I'd give it a one. I wouldn't give it a one. Maybe a I'd four. Say, I'd say four. Yeah, I'd it, say four. It wasn't the worst thing ever, but we're talking. Rolling the DCEU back to like Superman 3 and 4 levels, mm -hmm. Supergirl levels, 80s movie. I mean, they got that part right. They made an 80s yeah. superhero movie. That's, that's not true. You know. They were too invested. And they, look what happened. But it was not It was a good movie. They wanted that authenticity to shine through. And also Wonder Woman doesn't rape. Uh, Superman doesn't kill and Wonder Woman doesn't rape. I'm just putting that, putting that out. He really bothers him. It know? does bother me. It's um, like I didn't really think about it at first. I'm like, because you see... You see Chris Pine. So I wasn't making the connection that like, oh, it's actually this other guy. Cause oh, no, I caught that right away. I was like, oh, that's not right. Because I was like, wait, wait, they're heading to, I'm like, that's not him, though. I was like, that's not okay. <laughs> All right. So back to the back to the ratings here on Bounding in the Comics. On the flip side, the first Wonder Woman is the highest, one of the highest scoring DCEU movies at 7.4. Shazam and Man of Steel tie for second right behind it. Uh, both have a seven. Most users, approximately 39,000 people who rated WW84, gave it a 5, 6, or 7, and scores on par with Green Lantern's 5.5 stars. That is worse by a small margin, but while a DC movie, Green Lantern is not considered uh, a DCEU movie, it was okay, its own so continuity. It, 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 it's, you know, they're splitting hairs here a little bit. A little bit. Um, now, it is doing a little bit better on Rotten Tomatoes. I did pull that up. It's at 61 and 74. Well, now they're going to show. You know what I mean? They're going to they're gonna make sure that all these counts just suddenly appear with, you know, I'm sure if you read the reviews, it'll sound like, you know, bots... Because that's what always happens. Uh, after advanced reviews, Wonder Woman 84's Rotten Tomatoes score was higher 89. That's true. We saw it and it was certified mm -hmm. fresh. And yep. then they had to walk it back. And they didn't take that tweet down where they literally had a commercial. Like, Wonder Woman 84 is certified fresh. Oh, they're fresh. not going to take that down. They they had it because they're, they're saying it's not a lie because it was for like that 20 minutes they made that commercial. Yeah. Yeah. So um, this is going to be interesting. It, it tanked in China. It was a $200 million movie. I heard movie. that, yes. Of course, the excuse is going to be the pandemic. Now, some people were trying to find a bright spot. They're like, oh, Wonder Woman 84 made $16 million opening weekend during a pandemic. That's that's great. It made $100 million worldwide. Yeah. That's not so great because 
I just want to put that Demon Slayer in Japan. It made 300 and some million dollars in just a couple of months, mostly just in Japan during a pandemic. Yeah. And, you know, so it's not great. No. Uh, it's not great. It's it's better. Again, this is like we came in next to last place because there wasn't any competition. Right. You know, but they're, they'll just blame the uh, the pandemic. That's what they'll blame everything on. Everything is a pandemic. Um, but, yeah, so the scores are not good. Metacritic, uh, the meta score is at 60 based on critical and 4.2 Ooh. for for uh, actual people based Ooh. on uh, <laughs> yeah not good so where does this go to where you're going to take it now uh okay so we're playing catch up here wdw pro who's been writing for pirates and princesses.net is, is my disney blog that is geeky's disney blog um said that they could have a problem now because Patty Jenkins is kind of damaged goods again she directed uh the original wonder woman but she did not write it uh, right, and in this, she's getting to write and do everything. Right. So, so you know, that's what's a little bit worrisome here. Yeah, so uh, Patty Jenkins uh, does have a good record. And again, everybody makes a bad movie. Yeah, it's stuff, stuff happens while. sometimes. But, um, you know, she is going to be in charge of Rogue Squadron, which I was initially, until I saw Wonder Woman 84, was very excited for. I was like, okay, Patty Jenkins is solid. Wonder Woman is good. Uh, she seems to be uh, pro Military, her dad was right. a pilot. I'm like, this could actually be a really she good thing. She seems to have experience with, you know, kind of experience with what it's about. And she's a big Star Wars fan, she says. Right. So, you know, and it could be really good. I'm hoping it is. I don't want it to suck. I, I, I'm tired of sucky movies from from Disney. Yeah. Now, he does say that, look, it wasn't uh, Last Jedi bad in terms of destroying a franchise. A lot of people are saying no. Wonder Woman's going to destroy the franchise. No, I don't believe that. We still have the Snyder Cut. We still have a good Wonder Woman movie. And like I said, maybe this one will be a uh, Thor 2 or an Iron Man 2 where it's definitely not as good as the first one, but they were able to rebound with, with later mm -hmm. movies, hopefully. But the fact that she's going to be involved in Star Wars now is kind of like... Mm. Yeah, it's a little bit. <laughs> I was really on board with it, but now I'm like, oh, now I got to think about that. Yeah, and I think that's not just us. I think everybody's going to take a step back and think about it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and Pro points out that she's no longer a sure thing for Rogue Squadron, which I agree with. Um, you know, I do agree with this 100% because, you know, I, I thought she couldn't do any wrong. Everything she worked on was good. And then this happened. This is the one she had the most control over. Well, need, then she needs to go and find some people who know Star Wars, who know traditional classic Star Wars very well, and have them help her with this one. Um, you know, or some of the some of the authors that did books people liked, and maybe have them help her with this one. Co-written by John Favreau and Dave. Filoni. Yeah, there you go. Patty Jenkins, John Favreau, and Dave Filoni. If you get those three on board, I'm like, yeah, okay, this might be okay. Yeah. Um, but if, if you're going to let Patty Jenkins just do whatever she wants to do with Star Wars, I, I don't know, guys. Uh, I, I got, I got I, reservations. I, I'm not, I mean, I was a lot more excited than I am now. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Because I was, I wanted one more, you know what I'm saying? I was so excited about one more. You were, you were super I spent excited. the last couple of years just being so excited about it. I couldn't wait. I was so happy. And then I watched it and it just was like, and I saw it was how long it was. And then it was just like all over the damn place. And I was just like, I can't, it's just. You know, they're, they're, you know, sympathetic villains, but it's like, you know, I'm just so tired of everybody, you know, just, you know, they, they, no one's ever truly bad. Sometimes they're just, they just need a hug. I'm so tired of the, the whole, this whole storytelling method. Yeah, I, I, it was like getting a lump of coal for Christmas. But I guess, and they need to stop, yeah, you being pissed at Twitter. Yep. Because no one is ever truly bad. Everyone has a glimmer of goodness in them and they just need your acceptance and, you know, you to stop nagging on them on Twitter, you know, it's always the pandemic or Orange Man bad. Orange Man bad. Well, that's the thing. That's what's really interesting about this movie, right? We had the uh, the uh, uh, Pedro Pascal character, uh, Maxwell Lord, that was supposed to be a Trump stand-in, which I personally, other I than the hair. I, I didn't get it. I didn't get it either. I got generic Wall Street uh, TV he, he, personality, he Tony he Robbins. He struck me as more like a televangelist from the 80s than anything. Yeah, yeah. So I got more of that from him. But they redeemed him. And you're supposed to feel sympathetic Oh, for yeah, him. that's right. Well, you know, there you go. You can't I get mad at this guy. I double for, standard. You can't I'm get just, mad at this guy. But now, for the people that are all like, you know, oh, well, it's just good because they're sympathetic they're villains. And I'm just like, well, then, if no one is ever truly bad uh, and, and you keep redeeming them on these shows, how come you are so quick to say, say everyone is permanently bad and doesn't agree with you politically? There you go. I mean, this guy almost destroyed the world with a magic wishing rock. 
And, and I hate and, when that happens. And it's okay because he hugged his kid at the end of the movie. So uh, you can forgive him because he's human. But she is still bad and... And now they're saying she's she's you know bi and all this other crap because there, she clearly has the, the, she has the hots for Diana. I thought she just wanted to be her. I didn't get that she wanted to I, I be in her. Didn't get you know? any of <laughs> so. that. I got I got Riddler, uh, you know, Batman Forever vibes from her. That yeah, she was kind of insecure and was like, wow, I wish I could be like her. That doesn't yeah. mean she wants to do stuff. Why is it like people can't admire somebody? Or be friends with somebody without having to sleep with them. Right. It's like, you that... see, you know what? No women can ever just be friends. They have to be, they, they're obviously, I ship them. No men can just be friends. I ship them. You know, it's just like, what the hell? You can be friends with somebody. You can admire somebody. It doesn't mean, you can think, I say all the time, oh my gosh, she's really cute. Do I want to sleep with her? No. But do I think she's really cute and I can appreciate how cute she is? Hell yeah. Yeah. You can, but now you say that, it's like, oh, you must be, oh, you must be paying yeah. for the other team. Yeah. No, so. no, I just think someone's cute, and I'm, I can appreciate and respect that they are cute, and that you know I might like wish I looked like that. I mean, I can say Henry Cavill has an ass you can bounce a quarter off of. Doesn't mean I want to get with Hen Henry Cavill. Maybe I admire the way my wife admires Henry Cavill, <laughs> no, and I not. wish I had an you ass. Do not. That you it makes you so mad. Bounce anyway, a quarter off of. I didn't bring him up. You brought him into this. Uh, you brought him into this. I have. I. I am absolved of, of guilt in this situation. So I don't know, but yeah, I mean, look, like guys have, you know, people they look up to. You look up to like you know movie stars. Or you look up to you know whatever. It doesn't mean you're got the hots from. I don't know. It's it's, it's just ridiculous. Stupid. Everybody's stupid. The world is stupid. We live in stupid world. I agree. So uh, anyway, um, Wonder Woman three might be might address that stupid world. Yeah, and they turned around and gave her and I want Wonder Woman three. Yeah. <laughs> It's like the green let Wonder Woman three, even though the, the, there's been backlash. Well, let's hope to God they that they don't have you know these people write Wonder Woman three. Well, maybe this maybe this one will be a better a better Wonder Woman movie. Let's get Zack Snyder in there and see if he can fix it. I don't know. All right, we gotta wrap this yep. up. Yep. Okay, so please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. We'll talk later. Bye.